Welcome back. In the last video, I told you that, that pressure times volume is a constant, that if you increase the pressure, you, or if you uh, increase the volume, you're going to decrease the pressure. And hopefully, you got an intuitive sense why. Or, or likewise, if you squeezed the balloon or the box and, and there, was no, there were no openings there, then the pressure um, within the box would increase. So with that said, let's see if we can do a couple of fairly typical problems that you'll see. So let's say that. Uh, I don't know. I have a box or a balloon or something, and let's say it has a volume. So let me call this the initial volume. Let me let me erase all of this. So let's say my initial volume <coughs> is 50 cubic meters, and let's say my initial pressure, my initial pressure is 500 pascals. And just so you remember, what's a pascal? That's 500 newtons per meter, 500 newtons per meter cubed. And then what is, and then let's say that I take that box or balloon or whatever, and I compress it down to 20 meters cubed. So let's say I compress it, so I squeeze it. So that was like the first example I gave last time. But it's the same container, and I squeeze it down to 20 meters cubed. <coughs> What's going to be the new pressure? Well, you should immediately have an intuition that what happens when you squeeze a balloon? It becomes harder to do it. Sorry, I just had some peanuts. I should have had some water with it. Um, my throat's very dry. But anyway, uh, I'll try to I'll soldier through this, this, this video. So what's going to be the new pressure? Well, it's definitely going to be higher, right? When you decrease the volume, the pressure increases. They're inversely related. So the pressure's going to go up. And let's see if we can calculate it. Well, we know that P1 times v1 is equal to some constant. And, and since we have no aggregate change in energy, right? I'm just telling you that the box squeezed. I'm not telling you um, whether it did any work or anything like that. The, the same constant is going to be equal to the new pressure times the new volume. It's going to be equal to p2 times v2. So you could just have the general relationship. p1 times v1 is equal to p2 times v2. Assuming that no work was done and there was no uh, exchange of energy from outside of the system. And in most of these cases, when you see this in exam, that is the case. So the old pressure was 500 pascals times 50 meters cubed. And one thing to keep in mind, because we're using both the same units on the same side, because this is an equivalent, this, this equivalence, um, is, is not equal, we're not saying it has to equal to some necessary absolute number. For example, we don't know exactly what this k is, although we could figure it out right now. As long as you're using one unit for pressure on this side and one unit for volume on this side, you just have to use the same units. <coughs> so we could have done this same exact problem the exact same way if instead of meters cubed, they said liters. And as long as we wanted, we had liters here. You just have to make sure you're using the same units on both sides. So in this case, we have 500 pascals of pressure. The volume is 50 meters cubed. And that's going to be equal. <coughs> Excuse me. To the new pressure, P2 times the new volume, 20 meters cubed. And so let's see what we can do. We can um, divide both sides by 10. So we can, you know, just take a 10 out of there. And then we could divide both sides by 2. So that becomes a 250. And so we uh, we get 250 times 5 is equal to P2. And so P2 is equal to 1,250 pascals. And if we kept with the units, you would have seen that. So when I decreased the volume by um, more, you know, by roughly 60% is how much I decreased the volume, I have the pressure actually uh, increased by 2.5. So that, that gels with what we talked about before. Now let's, let's add another variable into this mix. Let's talk about temperature. And, and like pressure, and like volume, and like work, and a lot of concepts that we talk about in physics, temperature is something that you probably are at least reasonably familiar with, right? Temperature. I mean, you, well, how do you view temperature? Temperature, I think if, if a high temperature means something is hot, and a low temperature means something is cold. And I think you, that also gives you intuition that, that a higher temperature object has more energy, right? Higher temperature has higher energy, right? The sun has more energy than 
a than an ice cube, right? I think that's fair enough. And I think you, you also have the sense that what what would have more energy a uh, a hundred degree a hundred degree um, let me think of something cup of tea cup of tea or a, or a hundred degree um, let me th I don't know vat of vat of you know barrel of tea I want to make them equivalent in terms of what they're holding so I think I think you have the sense even though they're the same temperature they're both pretty warm let's say this was 100 degrees Celsius so they're both boiling that the barrel because there's more of it it's going to have more energy right it's it's equally hot and it's just there, there's just more molecules there and so that's what temperature is temperature temperature in general is a measure roughly is is equal to some constant times the kinetic energy the average kinetic energy kinetic energy per molecule per molecule sorry it's the average kinetic energy per molecule so the average kinetic energy of the system divided by the total number of molecules we have so if i took so it's it, you, i guess another way we could talk about it is temperature is essentially energy per molecule. So something that has a lot of molecules where n is the number of molecules. Right? So another way we could view this is that the kinetic energy of the system of the system is going to be equal to the number of molecules times the temperature. And you know, this is just a constant, so if you know times one over k, but one over k, we don't even know what this is, so we could say that's still a constant. So the kinetic energy of the system is going to be equal to some constant times the number of um, particles times temperature, right? And we don't know what this is, and we're going to figure this out later. So this is another interesting concept. We said that pre pre uh, pressure times uh, volume is is proportional to the kinetic energy of the system. Of the system, the aggregate. If you take all of the molecules and combine their kinetic energies, and these aren't the same k's. I mean, I could put another constant here. I call that k1. And we also know. We also know that that um, the kinetic energy of the system is equal to some other constant i don't know times the number of the number of um, the number of molecules i have times the temperature right so if you think about it you could also say that you know this is proportional to this and this is proportional to this so you could say that pressure times volume is proportional to the number and these are all different proportional constants we'll figure out this exact constant later but we could say that pressure times volume is proportional to the number of molecules we have times temperature and we said kind of temperature is is we can kind of view it as energy per molecule or another way we could say that if if this constant is constant which it is by definition let me change the colors and the number of molecules is constant we have pv over temperature, pressure times volume over temperature is going to be equal to something times the number of molecules. So we could say that's some other constant, I don't know, K4. So this is another interesting thing to think about. We said pressure times volume is equal to pressure times volume. Now we added temperature into the mix. So let's so let me clear this up. <clears throat> I think I got my throat back. So we could say P1 times V1 times over T1 is equal to P2 times V2 over T2. And does this make sense to you? Let's say, what happens if if I have another box and you know I have my particles bouncing around like always and they're you know I have some volume and some some amount of pressure. What happens when the temperature goes up? What am I saying? Well I'm saying that the average kinetic energy per molecule is essentially going to go up so they're going to bounce against the walls more so if they bounce against the walls more the pressure is going to go up right assuming volume stays flat right another way you could you could think about it let's say let's say the temperature goes up and um, i increase and let's say the pressure stays flat so what did i have to do well, I just said if the temperature goes up, the average kinetic energy of each molecule, they'll bounce more. So in order to make them bounce 
the, the against the sides of the walls uh, as often, I'd have to increase the volume. So if you hold pressure constant, the only way you can do that is by increasing the volume while you increase the temperature. So let's keep this in mind, and we will use this to solve some pretty typical problems in the next video.